Hello there, it appears I'm live, yes. Welcome everybody, thank you so much for being here, whether live or later in the playback. I must just wipe my glasses because a little bit steamy because of the heat. And then we will get on with today's topics. I'm going to begin today um, by sharing my latest stream. We all dream. Some of you say, no, I never dream. Everybody dreams. It's just whether you recall it or not. And I've done psychology. I've studied dreams to very high standard. Uh, so who knows what I was talking about. And basically, there's two reasons why you'll remember a dream. One is the state of waking. So, for example, if you wake up really fast, then you are likely to remember your dream more. The other one is if you play it through as soon as you get up. So if you think, oh, it was a nightmare or something really strange, you're going to wake up and kind of recall it straight away to yourself so you'll remember it. Any dream you think, oh, I remember that as you're waking up. If you get up, go off, do something, literally five minutes if you haven't recalled it in your waking state you won't remember it or you'll remember tiny bits of it even though you're pretty sure you did remember it when you woke up so i'm going to use this as my topic page today of inspiration and creation because yes dreams have meanings and they're not always meaning what you think they are so they're not a literal translation often of what happens to the meaning but mostly your dreams are your filing system and your subconscious playing things out so it's very healthy to dream and particularly healthy to remember your dreams so it's your brain filing things into categories dismissing them or focusing on some things which is the parts you normally remember and putting them into categories and places in your brain and that's why sometimes you might get deja vu it might be something you've thought about in your sleep dreamt about it and that is what deja vu is basically so I did write down as soon as I got up, I wrote some little notes. And that way you'll remember your dream better anyway. I've actually got three recent dreams on my board, but I'll do the one that I had last night, which will basically uh, be fresher in my mind, so to speak. So I won't go into my meanings or I think I'll just tell you my dream and you can make of it what you like. Basically, hello, Sharon. Good morning, hope you're having a, a great, wonderful, beautiful day. I certainly am now, you're here, my friend. In Cyprus now, here it's half past five in the evening, so that gives you some idea of how different my time is. So, yeah, it gives you a clue that I think Jimmy says his is on at 6 a.m., is that what Jimmy's is? And that's just after my lunch, <laughs> hence why I often make Jimmy's lives, because if I finish lunch, then I normally watch his before I do something else. So, yeah, top past five in the evening now. So I'm way ahead of you. And let me tell you, Sharon, yes, today for you will be a beautiful day because I've done most of the day and it was good. <laughs> OK, so my dream. Basically, this isn't true. I went to work with Mike. Mike doesn't work. And he was in this big, let's call it a farm place or a homestead place. And there was all these outside buildings. And he said, did I want to go into work with him that day? Because the man who owned it had loads of, he's got fields, overgrown weeds to clear one area. And he's got vineyards to clear and cut back another area. And he said, you don't have to come, but he'd be grateful if you came and helped. So I said, yes. And I remember going all these pathways around all these different buildings. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to remember where I went. Because Mike said, when you finish, I'll meet you back where we started. Now, I can't remember directions. So that part is true. And he was going in and out all these buildings. 
And I said, well, I'll need some tools. And on the way, Mike was collecting, like, um, you know, like those choppers that you do, say, hedges with, with really long handles. He got those and some little secateurs and snippy things. He collected some tools. And I said, well, I'll need a wheelbarrow because if I'm doing cuttings and whatever, I need a wheelbarrow. And he said, oh, no, you can't have a wheelbarrow because the guy's needing that today. He's got a digger. And he's clearing some areas. And with his big digger, he's going to put all his cuttings that he gets up with the digger in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> okay, bizarre. Everyone just tuning in. This is a dream. <laughs> this was my dream last night. So I said, oh, well, I need something to put it in. And then with these great big dustbins and great big... Um, industrial beans and that's oh, can I use that can I use that he kept saying no can't use that that's for something else no you can't use that and I said well I need something to put all these big cuttings in and in the end he found a bucket that we're not talking a normal mop bucket we're talking almost like a beach sandcastle size bucket and he said well you can put it in that then so that was weird um and then eventually I I'm almost at the vineyard, and then this little miniature train comes along. You can fit in it, but it's very small. And um, Mike said, oh, he's off. So this train driver had all tourists in it on this guy's land. And he said, well, you can get in and come on the train ride before you start. So I said, OK, then. And I got in. And suddenly the train got to this place where it doesn't go anymore. It diverts somewhere else. And he said, oh, it goes around the whole place. But he said, if you get out now, it's a much better place to see. It's a long, narrow walkway. And it was like narrow. You could just about go single file. And one side was a big ridge and it was all like dead grasses overgrown. And the other side was a high wall. You can see over it. So we were walking down there. It's quite a few of us walking down. And suddenly behind me, someone says, oh, where, where can we walk? I'm a bit frightened. So I said, what's the matter? And they said, we're blind. We can't really see. So I said, oh, be careful, because the guys just said there's sea on one side. And in a minute, the tall overgrown bit drops down and there's sea. And I can hear the sea swishing around all the time. And I can hear the sea swishing, so I'm helping these blind people. And then suddenly the other side drops as well, and you've got all rocks in little curves and fancy shapes, and you can see through. And as we're going along, he says, oh, in a minute we'll get to a big old bit of furniture that's all carved out. And he said, what we do is let any blind people touch it. It's really old and ancient, but only blind people can touch it because gradually it's going to wear away. So I let these blind people go by and said, you can touch it. And the guy said, hold on a minute. How many of you are there? And they said, oh, there's quite a lot of us. He said, oh, no. He said, one or two is OK, but I don't want loads of people touching it. So they weren't allowed to touch it. And I said, "Where is? what is this in the middle of this area? this old bit of furniture and he said oh he said if you look through the rocks you can see there's like rock houses in the distance and there's prehistoric people lived there and I looked through and they were way in the distance and I could see like holes in the rocks and eventually this lady in rags came out she looked like a normal lady and she was holding a bowl and she walked out into the next one and there was all these prehistoric things, people there. And then I just remember hearing the crashing of the sea, and that was it. <laughs> Did you like that? So Sharon says, hey, Dawn, you collect rocks, gemstones, petrified wood. I like petrified wood. Um, I don't have really much. I have bird feathers. I have petrified uh, wildlife. Yes, like geckos, petrified geckos. I have snake skins. I have a like a sea urchin, but not stones and things really. I don't. I know Sharon collects them. Sharon, can people buy stuff off of you? I know you make stuff. So if you want to put any link in there or any contact or anything, Sharon, you're quite welcome to. I believe Sharon makes things from her stones. 
So if you will put any info, Sharon, you're very welcome to put that in the chat, anything you like. So let's go on to my next section today, and we're going to do to do new to you. And I want to share easy ice cream making because we're at the height of summer here now. Sharon says, Dawn, if we go to visit someone and they have rocks, I respect what people have. I don't touch what they have. Yes, I know because some of the um, certain rocks and precious gems and that, um, that if they've got like powers, a lot of people believe they've got powers or can do good for you or mean different things. Yes, I know that you're not supposed to touch them. Um it's like baby animals, isn't it? If you touch a newborn baby animal, a lot of people go, oh, look at this cute little animal and pick it up. That's like the worst thing you can do because then the mother uh, doesn't smell it as the baby anymore. Okay, so my easy basic vanilla ice cream recipe. This makes one pint, which is 600 millilitres. You need six ounces, which is 175 grams of caster sugar, two eggs, approximately size three, half a pint, which is 300 millilitres of milk, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla essence, 14 and a half ounces, which is 410 grams of canned evaporated milk. You put five ounces, 150 grams of caster sugar with the eggs in a bowl. Beat them together with a wooden spoon and let them become light and fluffy. Heat milk to just below simmering point and pour over the egg mixture, stirring all the time. Place a bowl of custard over pan of boiling water and cook, stirring until the mixture coats the back of the spoon. Remove from the heat. Stir in the vanilla essence, then sprinkle surface with remaining sugar and allow to become cold. Meanwhile, chill the evaporated milk in the fridge. When the custard is cold, stir in the evaporated milk, then pour into a foil container and freeze. No machines needed here. Allow to freeze for about two and a half hours and then remove from the freezer, break up the ice cream to stop large ice crystals from being formed. This can be done in a food processor or with electric beaters or simply by using a wooden spoon. At this stage, add any flavorings of your choice, return the ice cream to the freezer and to serve, remove from the freezer 15 minutes before needed. All my things have just blown all round <laughs> the floor because I've got a fan on. And yet again, it's alive where I've left the screen. <laughs> uh, I've got it on other social media at the same time, but I don't have any other screens, Sharon. <laughs> I don't have any other screens. Uh, I've got uh, seven in total, I think, watching something like that. To, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have other devices on at the same time because I can only cope with one thing at once. <laughs> uh, Sharon says, Dawn, I've been trying to wire wrap rocks, but I suck at wrapping rocks. <laughs> I do make jewellery, though. Right, so if you want Sharon to put any contacts in anywhere where people can get hold of you or, or see what you make, then uh, you're quite welcome to do that. Okay, so that's my easy, easy ice cream. And then in the links below, I've put a link to my easiest ice lolly or popsicle recipe. It's so easy and I'm going to do it tomorrow because we're just so dry here. It's a heat wave and it's a hot country anyway. So I've put the link below, but I'm going to read it out for you as well now. My recipe, the easiest, easiest, less ingredients, cooling, refreshing popsicles. So I'm going to put this under my section of coffee break, what to watch on your coffee break. 
And as I say, it's linked below. And I had to watch it today. It's my video on, uh, I think it's on my other channel. Uh, and I had to watch it to write it down so I could read it to you. But as I say, if you want, I'll read it now. But if you can't remember or don't want to write it down now, the video is linked below so you can see how to make it again. This is the easiest way. And they are so refreshing. So for my lollies, we call them, you need six ounces of sugar in a pan and you dissolve that on the heat. You want three quarters of a pint of water, which is 450, I think, something. And then you heat the water and the sugar until the sugar dissolves. Bring it to the boil and then boil for another three minutes. That's the key. Add three tablespoons of lemon juice. We have so many lemon trees here, so that's a good way for me to use more lemon. And then leave it to cool. Divide it into three tubs. Now, I use ice cream tubs. You can divide it into more tubs if you want, if you're going to make more flavours. I make about three at a time. Then you add half a pint of what flavours you want to each ice cream tub, if that's what you've used. And I use Coca-Cola. I use squash, as in, you know what you add to water for a fruit drink. Squash, do you call it that? Cordial, whatever you call it. Um, I've made some with alcohol, different liqueurs. So strawberry liqueur, I think I used in the video. Ouzo, which is like a perno. So you can make alcoholic ones or not. You could add 7-Up or lemonade, any fizzy drinks, Fanta, any juices. You can make your own concoctions. Oh, I think I had a peach cordial last time I used. So you add a quarter of a pint of any flavours to each one. Then you cover. So obviously I use the ice cream lids. Then freeze for two to three hours until half frozen you don't want them solid then you whisk well with a spoon and then divide them up into individual lollies now you could use just yogurt pots or dessert little mini dishes um, in the video I've used like small jelly molds whatever you want to put them in and then you refreeze for 30 minutes. And when they're almost solid, you put in, if you want to use popsicle sticks or just leave them in dessert dishes and then freeze until solid. You can then either tip them out and serve them, serve them on the stick, or we just you leave them in the dessert dish and crush them up and eat them like that. I don't have Fastbook either, Sharon. I don't have Tiki Toki or Fastbook. I have no need. Um, where do you live? South Georgia. I'm on the island of Cyprus, which is near Egypt. So I'm a long way away. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the Mediterranean, far, far from Europe. <laughs> We are an independent country. We're not an island that's associated or part of any other country. So, yeah, I did have a very kind comment saying, have you got, um, are you being evacuated? Because they've heard Greek islands. There's now three Greek islands that have been evacuated for fire reasons. I'm not a Greek island and I'm nowhere near any of those. I'm even further away, <laughs> even further away. So, yes, I live here, a beautiful little island. If you go on my playlist, there's a playlist title, um, Out and About. I think it's Out and About in Cyprus, something like that. And you can see lots of different places of Cyprus. Or you can go on my uh, playlist. Um, I think it's something about walk with me, rural walks in Cyprus, something like that. And it shows you literally all around my area where I live. I live in an abandoned village. No people live here. <laughs> no one for miles and miles. There's no shops. We have to go an hour away to go to town. 
Um, we're part way up a mountainside. It's all scenery. We've got sea views, but it's way down. Uh, but we've got sea views. We've got mountain views. We've got goats everywhere. We don't have goats. Um, Egypt, my gosh, I wish I could eat. Yeah, we went as part of our honeymoon. We got married in Cyprus and we went for part of our honeymoon. We went on two cruises back to back. And one was to Egypt, because that's not far from us, really. And we saw the pyramids. I was shocked. I thought the pyramids were in the middle of the desert. No, they're not. Literally, the big built-up city is right next to the pyramids. But you always see pictures of it that way. But right where my head is, is the big city, and the pyramids are here. I was shocked by that. I did not know the pyramids I thought they were in the middle of a desert somewhere. No, they are not. <laughs> and we went to see how paper was made at a paper factory. Um, we went to a museum there. We saw tombs and all those kind of things. It was good, but we didn't also realise how dangerous it is there. You have to have armed guards with you all the time. I wouldn't have gone, I don't think, if I'd known that. And outside all the buildings, they got like right barriers up and bomb barriers. And so, yeah, if you ever go, do pick your time. Do look up what the situation is there. Uh, apparently, it's got worse since we went 17 years ago. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> do do check it out before you go. And if you go, Sharon, pop into Cyprus. You're very welcome to come and stay here. So you can always pop by. Mr. Jimmy's uh, hoping to come in a couple, two or three years time. So, hey, you could get a big expedition. <laughs> oh, dear. But, yeah, they're not in the middle of the desert, though. They are right by the city. They're right by the city. It's a big city, a big, dirty, high-rise buildings because we were on the tour bus and they said, oh, we're just coming to the uh, pyramids now and I'm like what we're going through all these big high tower blocks I'm like what and then you can just about see them poking over the top that's how tall the tower blocks are and I was like no way I was kind of quite upset by that um, I was like oh <laughs> am I the only one who didn't know they were in the middle of the city <laughs> so yeah yeah, definitely somewhere worth going. And then we went on another cruise uh, and we went to Rodos, which you probably know as Rhodes. Um, and we went there. So we had half the honeymoon of sightseeing and places that neither of us had gone to before, trying to find somewhere neither of us had gone. And uh, then we went uh, the second part of the cruise. It was a separate boat, swap boat. And we went to Rhodes, and that was really for a sort of chill out. That guy told me he didn't know what he was talking about then. I don't I can't remember exactly what part of Egypt it's in, but they're certainly not in the middle of the desert. <laughs> uh, which is, I mean, imagine if you live in one of these cheap tower blocks and you've got the views of pyramids. <laughs> you'd think that'd be worth a lot of money, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I can't in my head pinpoint the exact point of Egypt where they are but just to say they're not in the middle of the desert <laughs> certainly not okay let's move on to my next section let's look at a book I took from my book nook and people have asked me to read some more of my Aesop fables these are very short versions so we'll just get the basic story with the proverb and this one is The Lion and the Fox. An old lion came up with a plan to get himself some food without having to run and sweat and work for it. He lay in a cave, moaned and groaned for all he was worth. Oh, my head hurts. Oh, my back aches. Oh, my paws are so sore. I'm ill. I'm sick. I'm dying. It wasn't long before animal after animal came to see how poor Lion was doing. But the moment they entered the lion's cave, he pounced on them and gobbled them up. One day a fox came to call. He stood outside the cave and asked, How are you, Lion? 
feeling better? Not at all, croaked the lion. Come in and see for yourself. I would, said the wise fox, if it wasn't for the fact that I can see plenty of tracks going into your cave and not a single one coming out. And this is where the phrase comes, look before you leap. So that's really interesting. I don't think guys been to Egypt. <laughs> well, as I say, if you ask me before I went, where where are they? I'd be oh, we're in the middle of the desert. And I'm like no, they're not. <laughs> they're not. I always ask people who come here and my volunteers that come, what is the most surprising thing you found about Cyprus, or what was unexpected, or what did you think before you came, and so on and so forth. Um, and out on this channel today is uh, my most recent volunteer video of what she did while she was here and some more of my village, my abandoned village and all the abandoned houses, well, all of them, a few of them, and what help she did for us. So if you take a look at that, you'll see more of my village <laughs> as I say only six people here and two of those are me and my husband Mike <laughs> so yeah very small village if I had the money I'd visit e Egypt in a heartbeat yes it's definitely something completely different oh then we had to trip down the Nile in a boat I would highly recommend that you get all the food on the boat and everything I would highly recommend that I think you can't go to Egypt and not have a cruise down the Nile. It's just like a day, or it's not even a day. Um, and you get on the boat and it cruises down the Nile and uh, you have a meal on there. Definitely recommend that if you go, Sharon. Most definitely. Okay, let's move on. Anyone who's new to the channel, my Monday lives are themed. As you see, lots of little things and my Wednesday live at the same time as this live is more chit chat and games and fun and catch up and I often show you what craft I'm currently working on and what book I'm reading so two very different lives and also on my other channel my lives are on Fridays but much earlier and if you look under most lives, not this one, because I forgot to do it, but look under most of my lives, there's links. Uh, probably cost a lot. Yeah, South Georgia. How far away is that for you? How long would the flight be? Would that be something like 10 hours, 9 hour flight? Maybe if that's like a long haul flight for you, isn't it? From America. You'll be coming the opposite way round, <laughs> a long way for sure. Probably quite costly then as well, I would think. Can you get one flight to Egypt? Oh, probably you can. Yeah, you probably can get one flight because America's big, isn't it? It's big. <laughs> it's big. You could get most places direct. Not like when I lived in England, you have to fly somewhere and then fly somewhere else. And sometimes you have to had to fly backwards to go forward you don't fly oh well, if you don't fly it would take you forever to go on the boat would you go on the boat go on a cruise are there cruises from america to egypt that would take forever surely <laughs> i think that would take forever i love to fly but i can't fly anymore i'm not allowed to fly anymore and i don't have a passport anymore <laughs> no more for me no no more travel i've been to so many countries love them all so many places yeah definitely love to go places what's the furthest place you've been sharon either in america or elsewhere what's the furthest place you've been to mine wouldn't compute with you because mine would have been from england uh, probably a 12-hour flight. No, maybe more than that. Maybe a 12-hour flight. We should go on cruise. Don't have the money. Don't have the money. Cruises are expensive. I think cruises are very expensive. 
I'd rather fly somewhere and spend all my time there and really sort of see a place. And I've always gone off the beaten track. So I, I don't just do the tourist things. I like to see the real life of the country. North Carolina, Arkansas. How far away is that for you? I'm not very good at my American history. Arkansas. Yeah, not very good at my American map history. When I first started YouTube, I had loads of Americans and people in other countries. And I had an atlas and got out and, oh, you're over there. Oh, you're over there. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, how far away is that for you? Yeah, I've probably, I love flying. I did like flying. I haven't flown since they made all the change regulations, such as you couldn't carry certain things in your hand luggage anymore and you have to pass things through, um, like take your shoes off. Do you remember that came into it when they brought that in? You can't carry, you can only carry a small amount of liquid, that kind of thing. I've never done that. I've never done this where you can have, um, a ticket on scanner ticket all these things no eight hours or less Ooh. now I couldn't drive a long way I don't drive but I can't even go in a vehicle a long way particularly now I think that's crazy yeah I, I haven't traveled for so long so long I was told where I wanted to relocate to Cyprus and my specialist said to me you, we can only arrange for you to fly one more time because it's a big upheaval because things happen to me and it's not basic medical situations. So I said, well, you do it one time, but if you move there and you don't like it, we don't think you could travel again. So I moved here. I had my honeymoon, which is why we had cruises um, and then never had a passport again. Never had a passport again. That's uh, See, I can't even afford a passport. <laughs> can't afford a passport but yeah at least i got to travel a lot prior so let's move on to monday fun day let's do our jokes quotes puns and fun so let's have some jokes i thought today i'd do some of my summer jokes because for me it's summer what do you call a sunburnt librarian? What do you call a sunburnt librarian? Well read. <laughs> well read. <laughs> well read. Oh, I think that's funny. What do sheep like to do in the summer? What do sheep like to do in the summer? Have a barbecue. <laughs> Sharon says, at least you're happy where you are, right, Dawn? Yes, it's good for my health here. Uh, I need heat. I need light. I need sunshine. I need good vibes. I don't need crazy England. Um, and the medical care here is superb. Uh, don't know what it's like where you are, but you can go into a doctor one day and they can say you need treatment at a hospital and you can go to a hospital the next day. And it's all very low price. I'll give you an example. I had a big fall a while ago and went straight to ER, the emergency room, straight there. And they said, well, like, I couldn't walk, basically. I had crutches and I could barely walk with the crutches. I've done something to my foot. And they said, where else hurts? I said, well, my foot hurts. I said, my knee hurts and my hip on the other side because how I twisted and went down, I hit my other hip. And um, I think I'd, I'd hit my shoulder or my back or something. And they said, um, right, well, we're going x-ray all those things. And I'm in a blind panic. Oh, my goodness, what cost is that going to be? And so and they didn't do one x-ray of each part obviously as you know they turn your foot round and do three or four x-rays and they did all these x-rays um and i got whatever i needed for everything they gave me some medication you have to pick up at the pharmacy and they said nothing was broken 
But if I had, and they said there was a problem with the foot and it was tendons and ligaments. But they said, if you have any further problems, then you can come back and ask for scans, other scans. And all of that, can you guess? It was 10 euros. That was it. For all those x-rays. Oh, my goodness. 10 euros. It's amazing. And Mike's got a problem. He's like... Uh, got a problem with his arm and shoulder at the top here and he's been having pain for a long time so he went to the doctor which was free and the doctor sent him to hospital for scans and x-rays and whatever and he's been told there's some tendon or ligament here that's become so worn out that it's rubbing but he's got only 20% left of the joint of the tendon or ligament, I forget what it is, but there's only 20% of it left. It's all frayed and whatever else. And they said he can have um, like surgery and sew it all back on, but they won't do it because of his age and other conditions he's got. He's got a hole in the heart. So best he doesn't have surgery if it's not needed. And they said that as long as he doesn't reach up with that arm, he can do low things. But he can't, he's not allowed, he can reach up, but he feels it. And they said, every time you reach up, you're going to start rubbing it and wear more away. So the long story of that is the fact that he's now got medicine, medicine for life that will stop another situation he's previously had, which was shaking. People think he's got Parkinson's, he hasn't, but it's like that. It's a shaking thing. And they said, because of that, he can now take medication, which they don't know how it works, but it does, that stops tremors. It's definitely not Parkinson's, um, but it stops tremors. He's got slight tremors now, but before it was so bad, he couldn't hold a cup of coffee. He would literally do this. The more he tries to keep still, the worse it is. And they said because it's um, like bad for his life, that if he doesn't take the tablets, it gives him a bad life, that all medication now for the rest of his life is now free. Not even a surcharge or part of a prescription, it is now free. And no one here has heard of that. Uh, medical stuff here sucks. Yeah, I, I don't get your medical system it seems like you can have insurance, but they always find a loophole around your insurance that you still pay. It would fear me to go to America and something happen because it seems like the first thing they want is your papers, as far as I can tell. Oh, that's horrible. That's super great. <laughs> it's our life. Good news, bad news. Good news, bad news. It's like a blooming roller coaster here. Seesaw. <laughs> Oh, people say, how do I cope with uh, what's wrong with me? But it's a case of, well, if you don't laugh, you're going to cry and give up. I did have a couple of bad weeks recently and I'm like, well, give up then. Just give up on your life or get on with it. So I'm getting on with it. <laughs> I'm getting on with it. <laughs> and that's why a lot of people can't believe what's wrong with me because you can't tell Mostly you can't tell. I've got an invisible uh, yeah, problem and people think you're fine. Because I put on a happy persona, people think I'm fine. And that is, I did explain, it's like comedians. Comedians are the uh, people more likely to be suicidal than anyone else. It's that happy persona to cover up the difficulties but yeah, I'm doing better now. Still got things going on, but we get on. Okay, on with the jokes. This is why I do jokes on everyone's channels all the time. I'm well known. And I notice other people start to then start doing their jokes, which is fine. <laughs> okay, next joke. I got rejected from a job at the sun cream factory. It's okay, though. I just reapplied. <laughs> I just reapplied. Only you know how you feel, how bad you hurt and all the pain. That's true, Sharon. And that's why I'm always there in chats for people. This is my community's chat. I'm just here to 
glue it all together. <laughs> I'm just here to glue it all together. Yes. I'm here for other people. And that's why I moderate on so many channels. I just, uh, hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. Hello. Okay, next joke. What do bees say in the summer? What do bees say in the summer? It's swarm, isn't it? It's swarm. <laughs> oh, dear. Some seasons are cold and some are hot. <laughs> some are hot. Some seasons are cold and some are hot. <laughs> okay. My son said he wanted to swim in any ocean this summer. I said, be more Pacific. <laughs> be more Pacific. <laughs> Why are crab children not good at sharing? Why are crab children not good at sharing? Because they're shellfish. Uh, because they're shellfish. What did the almond tree do all summer? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. The last joke of today. Who keeps the oceans clean? Mermaids. <laughs> mermaids. I'm like a mermaid at the moment. It's so hot. I'm in the pool more than I'm out the pool. Okay. Let's go on to my next segment. Nats, hacks, facts and stats. So I have three hacks for you today. My first one is, if you grow sage, rub fresh sage leaves on your teeth to clean them and they will remove stains. Use sage tea as a mouthwash if you suffer from mouth ulcers, sore tongue or bleeding gums. Next hack, a simple way to ease sunburn is grate a raw potato. Insert between a gauze or clean handkerchief and apply it to the affected area. It's very soothing and healing. Everyone's rushing to get their potatoes out now. Ah, there we go then. There's a tip for you then. So you want uh, bleeding ulcers. Well, would that help the sage? If it's bleeding gums and mouth ulcers, maybe give it a go, Sharon. Rub some fresh sage leaves there and use sage tea as a mouthwash. Yes, give that a go. Let me know. And the last one is after removing sticking plaster, remove the sticky mark by coating with petroleum jelly and leaving for a few minutes before rinsing off. Another method is to use cotton wool dipped in surgical or methylated spirit or nail varnish remover. So give those a go and let me know. So yeah, let me see how they work for you. So that was my little segments for today. Let me know what ones you like, what ones you want more of. And I do do some different ones as well. No spicy foods at all, says Sharon. I have to be careful of what I eat and drink. Yes, that would probably affect them quite badly, wouldn't it? Yes, do take care, my friend. Definitely. Yeah, so let me know in the comments. And which joke did you like the best? I do like doing my jokes sometimes. And um, maybe we'll do some more of the Aesop fables next time till I've worked my way through the book. Um, I thought I'd missed one there, but I haven't. We've got another lion one coming up. So the next one is the lion and the man. Do any of you know that? I do like a uh Aesop's fables I like quotes you will like to all your jokes I oh, bless you 
Yeah, I always used to do loads of jokes on Jimmy's channel. I do it now and then. Uh, someone else has taken the role now, which is fine. That's good. Gives me a break. Um, you might also like on my other channel, Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty. I've got a whole series. It's got playlist. It's The Life of the Gingerbread Man. You'll love that. I tell you, you'll love that. Start the beginning. Do start at the very beginning because the story progresses and it's a little gingerbread man <laughs> and his life. And it's very funny. They're very short. Um, and it goes through his life of he met oh, he got a dog first. <laughs> he found a like a gingerbread dog and all about that, what he named it. And then he got a girlfriend. Uh, you'll love that. Tranquility through life's natural beauty. Let me just type it in the bottom there. I nearly pressed in stream because my mouse was dead. Tranquility through life's natural beauty. Oh, let's put a space in between the words. There. That's my other channel. And if you're interested in crafts and things like that, that's on that channel um more animals if you love animals there's more animal things on there there's um my yorkshire terrier dogs i had in england they've got their own playlist pip and paws uh there's more of my cats on there there's more of cat diaries i've done a few cat diaries on this channel but there's some cat diaries also on that channel game with their own playlist look at my playlist that tells you what I do, because that is a right mixed channel, right on mix. Oh, i tell you what's on there, Sharon, you're like, is uh, my long haul holidays, places I've been long haul. Bear in mind, it's long haul from England, because some countries you'll be like, that's not long haul, such as I went to Cuba. For you, that wouldn't be long haul. <laughs> For me, that was long haul. Um, yeah, so that's got its own playlist. So do check out the playlist. Um Think what other playlists there are on that channel i don't know if i've got that channel's playlist written down anywhere mm. well, i might have yes i have i have the playlist names because when i put some their playlists i don't know if i've always got a playlist so we've got project morph you have to look what that is um shout out so any channels i do shout out for they got their own playlist hobby and craft holidays crafts and other hobbies animals flowers and plants if you're into that uh long haul adventures that's it uh i've got a playlist of music and visuals for relaxation study and calm I think that might be where my cloud video is. I've filmed like just at the sky from underneath, filming movement of clouds with music. That's very nice. I think there's rainbows. My pictures of rainbows with calm music. Um, what else have I done on that? Rain, rain sounds. And then while you hear the rain sounds, there's like, weeds and natural grasses and things um places to visit uh oh my collections i've got old medicine bottles old newspapers so that's got its own playlist vegetables fruit trees and other produce so that's kind of come over from this channel because all what i grow is on this channel Yorkshire Terriers, I said. There's a playlist of everything about herbs, teas and other drinks. So if you don't know how to make herb, herbal teas and things, it's in there. Organic products for cleaning and tips for using around the home. That's pretty cool. They'll make you go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it so calming you would be asleep? I tell you, um, van life, caravans, and trailers. 
you should see my vintage caravan I had. It was tiny, tiny, tiny. That's on there. Cap Diaries. I said, who are you? That's interesting. I did psychology. And it's a book I've got, Who Are You? And it investigates in a fun way. It's not heavy. In a fun way about why you look the way you are. And it's not just genetics. Um, why you do things that you do. And But it's all fun. And it's like quizzy things and things like look in a mirror and look at your right side and your left side. And they're quite fun. I've got to do more of those, actually, because I've got so many ideas for that. So who are you? That's a really cool one to look at. Frugal living, old photographs. Um, what else? Oh, letters from a gingerbread man. That's what I was talking about. Letters from a gingerbread man. Games and puzzles. If you're into jigsaw puzzles and games, um, I've got time lapse on there of different jigsaws I've done. Uh, oh, this one's my favourite. Autobiography of my nan, my grandma. And she wrote her life story and I've got it. And I've been reading it in small segments and I've made a playlist of that. So, again, with that, you need to start the beginning of that, really. Um, and she was born in 1918. So that gives you some idea of what sort of era we're talking about and how she grew up in London and the difference between town, like city of london and she went to the countryside all that so it's very interesting and then some fun videos if you want a laugh do go on the fun videos and look for gerald the talking gorilla and that's pretty fun as well so always look at my playlist why we're doing playlists should we do a playlist of this channel oops whoa everything's gone everything's blown away <laughs> okay so playlist of this channel relocating to cyprus and renovations you're so lucky yeah i am and do you know what reading it back i'm so like her in ways i didn't know so there's obviously something there lots of things that she says and I'm like, oh, my goodness, that's what I do. So, yeah. So on this channel, playlist, relocating to Cyprus and renovations. If you want to about, know about where I live, my house, what it looked like, there's all about that there, how we came to live here. I think I talk about the honeymoon uh, on there, so you can see that. Then I've got a playlist, our fruit, veg, trees and other produce. So you've got all sorts in there, like my hoople culture and everything. Seasonal holidays, festivals, traditions and customs of Cyprus. So if you're interested in that. Learning Greek language and also ways to study, plan and learning tips for anything. Out and about in Cyprus, I've mentioned. A channel or playlist all about me. <laughs> and that's basically anything, a chat, any chats I do in general vlogging. So if you want to know me more, I'm a bit open with that. Probably talk about YouTube and things like that on there as well. Airbnb, we did Airbnb here, so you'll find out about that. Nature, creatures and all animals. So I've got a playlist there. It's just so you can search for what you like on my channel because there's so much stuff. Um, Olive Farm Retreat Cyprus is our home and there's projects we've done with the outbuildings. So you can see those there. Full growing cycles of vegetables and fruit. So basically you can, you can look on there if you want to grow something. It's short videos from beginning to end of what to do, what not to do. But none of this nonsense about dig a hole. It's just facts. <laughs> Quick, simple recipes with homegrown produce. Now, any of my recipes, if I've got a recipe up, it means it's quick. It's easy and you don't need barely any ingredients. They're not recipes where you have to go and buy things. 
So they're things mostly from things in my garden and maybe a few basic things that people will have. Bugs and insects, friends or foe. So any insects, I tell you how to deal with them, if they're good, if they're bad, and identify insects. General gardening and gardening tips, that's one for you gardeners. Uh, rural off-grid and frugal homestead living. So if you're into your off-grid stuff, how we live for nothing basically a few very small bills and basically no jobs uh raised growing beds so if you're doing raised growing beds rural mountainside walks in cypress so there's a playlist there and as i say every single walk you see on there is from my home i don't get in a car and drive off and go for a walk they are all right here uh, Project Morph, the same as I say, you'll see what that is. Indoor greenhouse seed cultivation series. So this is how I grow all year round and I start them off in the winter indoors. Unboxings, if you love unboxings, there's a whole playlist. Uh, my Dolls House Craft and Hobbies, if you're interested in that. Another outbuilding, a whole series of the derelict abandoned donkey stable, rebuild and repurpose and products of Cyprus. And that's how, like how cheese is, woodwork, um, anything that's made. Uh, Sharon says, Dawn, you, you'll have towers of stones in Egypt. I noticed one on your shorts videos. I like that stuff. Towers of stones. Are you talking about where people pile stones on stones? Are you talking about that? I meant 54 views. 54 views. Are you talking about that where there's stones and people pile stones on top? Is that is that what you're talking about? I don't know if that's what you mean. Towers of stones. One of your shorts. I don't know which one that is. Let me know. I don't know which one. Is it a recent short? Those of stones. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that one is. If you give me more info, if it's a recent one or no, stone tower. Or one stone tower. There's a castle, uh, like a fort. Do you mean that? There's a fort. Hmm. I'm not sure. Do you mean an actual tower? There's a fort I've done recently, I think. There's Colossi Castle, which is like a fort. Stone tower. I don't know Someone asked me a question on one of my videos the other day And I had to go back and watch it To give the answer Because I wasn't quite sure It's kind of leaning like It's on the short Let me go and have a look on my shorts I've got to be careful Because I can't play anything Because I'll get done for music Let me look Leaning I'm trying to think Ooh, I'm live apparently <laughs> Let me go on my channel I can't see you now Is it recent? I'm trying to think what it would be Garden books Was it about this place? Hmm, leaning A short. It's Clossy Castle. No. Oh, there's a short Sharon. Where is Cypress? It's leaning. 
Oh, I see it. 54 views. More of our abandoned villages in Cyprus. Right, I found it, Sharon. I found it. It looked like a good right. That is another abandoned village, and that was part of a house. Don't know where it is. It's further up the mountains from us. There's a whole video of that. Um, if I don't know if you know, tell me if you know, because some people don't know. When you've got the short on your screen, so you've got the short here. Just over here, it's actually on the, if you're looking at the screen, it's on the right-hand side. I have to say that because you might be looking at me backwards. So you're looking at your short screen on your phone or whatever, and it's on the right-hand side outside the sort of screen picture. There's a little tiny box with a picture in, very small square. If you touch that, that takes you to the whole video if the short is from a video. And then you can see it in full screen size or if there's more information or more about the video. So that will take you then if you press that square little, it'll be a colored box because it's a segment of video. A little tiny square at the bottom, as I say, off the short screen, there's a little square here and you touch that and that will take you to the full video. So you'll see more. You've got to watch that video. Hello, Steve and Tina Jewell. Oh, hello, Mr. Jimmy, the astute tourist. <laughs> oh, yes, look, he's blue these days. <laughs> he's so blue. I forgot you were blue now. We made it to your life. Yay! If anyone's interested in anything about electric bikes, Steve and Tina Jewell are your people to go to. If I want to get one, that is where I'm going. Uh, they are great. They're absolutely great. They know it all. Oh, Sharon's saying hello to everyone. Hello. Yes, we're just explaining about some people don't know. When you watch a short, you've got your short screen and there's a little coloured box just over here on the right hand side. And if you press that, it will take you to the full video. So if you like something or you're interested in it, Hit that little square and you can see, as I say, sometimes it means you get the full screen then because the short, if you take it for a video, it gets rid of a lot of stuff. So you can see if there's writing on the screen, description or more about it. And then also remember when you watch the full video, always look in descriptions because it could give you more information there as well. Or what I do with my descriptions is nearly every video I put another associated video or something similar. So if you liked that, do look in my description and there'll be another video of something similar to it, if that's what you're interested in. So that was good, Sharon. We've got some info now out there. Very good. And I'm glad I found the one you were talking about. As I say, someone asked me a question on one of my videos and I had to watch the whole video to figure it out. And idiot me, I should have watched it on YouTube because I'm, I would have got a view. No, I watched it on like my channel, so obviously not. <laughs> but yeah, check out each other's channels, guys. Thought it had to work. Yes, he's normally working when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what his work consists of, <laughs> supporting his moderator. <laughs> Sharon, don't you think he looks cool and blue? <laughs> so, Steve and Tina and this astute tourist, if you want to type in about your latest video or what you've got coming up, remember this is your chat area, so use it to your advantage. And let people know what you're working on or what your latest video is. You're very welcome to on my channel. That's what I'm all about. Oh, you do have a channel. I was going to say, I didn't think you did have a channel. You weren't me there, Sharon, because I'm like, I'm not following you. I'm, I would have gone on yours first of all when I first knew you. Jimmy Dawson, watch your last video. <laughs> I love it, I love it, Jimmy. 
Sharon will get that. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, that is so sweet. Oh, I love you for that. Oh, what was it? Was it good? Oh, yes, it was. Hey, Della, how are you doing? Oh, Della. Oh, you're lovely. Della doesn't have a channel yet, guys. I know you'd all love to go over there and check it out, but I've just let you know. No channel there. No channel yet from Sharon. Um, but they are both great supporters of channels. So, yeah, check out Steve and, Jean, uh, Steve and Tina Jewel and check out the astute tourist who definitely is very astute. <laughs> Made me laugh so much. Oh, bless you, Jimmy. You're so sweet. Oh, he's a good moderator, isn't he? <laughs> Reminds me of someone I know. <laughs> oh, dear. Made me laugh. Oh, that's, that, that's a good moderator there. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Say hello to everybody. That's what I like. That's what I do on my other channel, my Friday Friendship Club on Friday Lives. Um, didn't know what time it is for you people. I don't know. Um, well, let's say I start this one at half past five in the evening. And my Friday Live on my other channel is my two o'clock in the afternoon. So I think Americans are in bed, <laughs> asleep. I did it for my Aussies because I kept complaining they couldn't uh, really come on because this is a weird time. This is about their one o'clock in the morning. So I did it for them, <laughs> but they haven't shown up yet. <laughs> Don't have a problem supporting everyone's channel and you're helping people. I know you do. And you're very active in the chats as well. So, yes, if uh, Mr. Jimmy, the astute tourist, uh, I find it hard to call you the astute tourist, if the, uh, the astute tourist and um, Tina and Steve want to put anything about their channels in this chat, you're both very welcome. Ah, uh, there we go. It's 8.37 on Monday. 8.37 on Monday. Yes. As I said, it's now half past six in the evening here, just gone. Cool. Oh, I like that word. I wish we had that word here right now. Yes, we have the heat right now. I'm not sweating today. Not too bad. I'm getting used to it again. Getting used to it. But I will go and be a mermaid as soon as I finish this live. I will go jumping in the pool because I can't like dry out too much. Still got my uh, swimwear on, just around the top on top. <laughs> I, I forget that you can't see lower down, but I feel funny if I'm just wearing a bikini top when I'm talking to you. So I throw a top on. <laughs> I know what I'm wearing. So <laughs> yes, I don't think I could do that. I couldn't do that. I could just sit here in my swimwear. I have to throw a top on, even though I could see you can only see the straps. Uh, what we got now? Uh, for what? Thank you, Sharon. For what? <laughs> Just all thanking each other. Yeah, I don't know. I said on the Astute Tourist Live today, I don't know what's going on. On my keyboard, it's a touch keyboard to the laptop. The other day I was posting videos and I couldn't do hashtag. It kept coming out as a slash whatever you call it, a slash, which on my keyboard is the one below it. It's got the question mark on top and the slash at the bottom. And the hashtag above it and off has got hashtag and the, I forget what you call the little squiggle thing, the C wave. That's it, <laughs> the C wave. And I couldn't suddenly do hashtag. Every time I hit hashtag when I was trying to post my video, it kept doing slash. So I thought, aha, uh -huh. let's see what slash does. Slash did slash. <laughs> so I had two keys doing slash. Nothing else was different. The C wave, when I hit caps, was still C wave. But the hashtag was another slash. Okay. Today it's fine again. Obviously switched off, come back on. But now, when I do emojis on chats, 
you know they originally you just had i think it was all yellow let's say the thumbs up was all yellow and all those things whatever those other hand gestures are waves and whatever i think originally they were all yellow when emojis first came to youtube but then they decided they had to have all their different skin tones fair enough but you could then hit the yellow and then the options came up above it and you clicked on whatever one you wanted. Great. The last few days, I don't have options. I have all the other things, yellow, flesh, you know, all their tones I have. But the actual thumbs up down the bottom, it is, let's say, tanned. And I was laughing today saying I can only do the tanned thumb now. All the other hands, waves, whatever, I've got with the option, but I've only got the tanned thumb. And I was saying on this future tourist channel, do they know it's hot here? I can now only do that. And sometimes when I'm commenting back on, like, um, my videos and someone leaves a comment, sometimes I can emoji and sometimes I can't. The symbol's there, but you click on it and nothing happens. So, anyone know any of that? Let me know. Let me see. I'm missing chat. Uh, Stephen Tina Jewell. Myra Falls was beautiful. We had fun swimming. Oh, tell us more about that. Have you got a video on that then? We need to know. Do you have video? For your kind words, you're very welcome. And be a loyal fan of our channel. Ah, by the way, I love popsicles. Did you hear about that then? I'm making some more popsicles. We call them lollipops. Um, but I'm I'm making some more popsicles tomorrow. And the link below here, I've actually linked to how I first made them because I had to revise, look it up because I'd forgotten what I needed to do. So I watched that through. Um, so if you want to know, you only need sugar, water, and whatever flavors you want to make them of course mr jimmy knows i'm going to make some alcoholic ones but i'm also making some coca-cola ones and all sorts of other things so you only need sugar water and flavoring they're easy to make you just need to boil the sugar down with the water you don't need a lot of sugar so don't panic on that and basically add your flavorings it's when to freeze when not to freeze and so on and so forth. Uh, smash that thumbs up. Yay. I saw that. There we go. Yes. Put, uh, you know, I always say moderators moderate your own channel. Yes. I do notice sometimes when I moderate on channels, some moderators don't, which is fair dues. But if you're a moderator, moderate all the channels or unless you're specifically like today i just did shirley's because it was her live but you shouldn't moderate some channels and not all the channels that's my opinion oh strawberry's your favorite strawberry your favorite comes other channel oh look at you go mr blue <laughs> are you a moderator for any other channel mr blue <laughs> mr blue mr blue blue Yes, what would everyone flavour theirs as? If you could pick, let's say, three flavours. You can choose three flavours. What are you going to make your popsicle or your lolly? What are you going to flavour them? Um, we di I did do the peach cordial last year. Might said, all do some of that again. I do like a Coca-Cola one. Last year, I was saying I did a raspberry liqueur, I remember doing. I did ouzo or perno, whatever you call that. I did that. I did a Coca-Cola. I did a Lemonade Stroke 7-Up. I don't think that was anything, actually, that one. Uh, as I say, Peach Cordial. What, what would everyone pick if you could only do... Oh, Mr. Jimmy's just done a link to your channel, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> he said, what's wrong with it? Yes, Mike's just got another video up because he only posts them really when he's got like a project to show you or whatever. So Dawn did a good edit job on that, he thinks. 
And Joe, if you're watching, that was my editing. <laughs> that was my editing. <laughs> Did enjoy your last video. Thank you very much. Oh, Sharon says the strawberry, but a, oh, strawberry, peach. Yeah, peach is good. Grape. That would be nice. Yeah, what what three flavours would everyone choose for popsicle? Doesn't have to be a real flavour. Like you could use something. What would I do? I think it needs to be quite fruity. I wouldn't do lemon, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think Coke, definitely a Coke one's quite nice. Coke might want to peach. I've just got another cordial, but might say it doesn't fancy that. It's a mix. I think it's raspberry. Can't remember what else is in it. Raspberry apple. There's about four flavours mixed in it. I might try one of those. Uh, Stu Terry says grape. He's with you on that one, Sharon. Orange and cherry. Oh, cherry would be nice. Have you ever tried root beer? Yes. I don't like anything like that. Mike does. Might drink something called Iron Brew. Is that like a root beer, really, Mike? Not really. What is it then? Oh, it's a standalone thing, but it's that kind of nasty taste. <laughs> oh, Jimmy likes root beer. Ooh, root beer, yum. <laughs> I think Mike's been very rude. He could really come on as soon as he's on his uh, computer. He could add a comment to, for himself there. Um, yeah, what other? Pineapple. What about pineapple flavour? I don't have pineapple. Pineapple flavour's nice. Yeah, so that's my job tomorrow. Going to make some popsicles because I'm just drinking and drinking and drinking. I got fed up with water, so that's why we've got some different cordials. Sharon says, lately I can't drink any Coke because they make me feel sick on my stomach. That Yeah, your ulcers. Yeah, they would do that. You don't, I think, acidy. No acidy things for you. Have to run and do some work, Dan. See you all later. Thank you so much for being an awesome moderator, Mr. Jimmy. Really appreciate it. Thanks for making me laugh. It was meant to be a kind way, you know, but that was really lovely. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, pineapple would be a good one. But as I say, I had to buy some cordials. And I'm just getting fed up with water. I'm literally oh, run out now. I'm just drinking, drinking, drinking. Mike bought Mike bought a um, new juice for me, and it's a mix of what is it, Mike? Banana, banana and strawberry, which sounds. A bit, will that be all right? Now, it's nice, but as you drink it, you can taste both things separate. It's almost like it's separated. It hasn't. It's all one. I shake it before I drink it. But you can literally taste strawberry and banana at exactly the same time. It's weird. And it's a funny colour. It's kind of a creamy not quite sludge, but creamy, dark creamy colour with a dark grey hint. <laughs> it sounds horrible, doesn't it? But it's not. It's really nice. It's quite thick. It almost looks like a smoothie. But it's a fruit juice. Fruit juice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I probably... I don't know whether to drink first or swim first. That's how bad it is now. It's like, do you jump in the water and then drink or do you have a quick drink? But I find also as well, if I'm drinking water and then jump in the pool, like it's not <laughs> gone down the water. <laughs> oh dear, it's so funny, it really is. Well, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I've gone way over what I normally do. Um as I say, the if you're new to the channel, my Wednesday lives are more chit-chat like this, really. Laughs, fun, play a game that you can play along with at the same time if I have time. Catch up on crafts and update you on my life, what's happening here. I appreciate everyone that's been in the chat. Really lift my spirit. Thank you so much for that. 
And until next time, as always, Maraki.